Hello and welcome to this short presentation on DSpace CRIS 7. Uh, it's for science presentation. My name is Simon Whittemore. I'm the International Business Development Director at For Science, and this is just a 10 minutes or so presentation on DSpace CRIS and the key features that we'd like to highlight for you. So, firstly, what is DSpace CRIS? Uh, it's Open source, I think, is one of the key points, uh, which means it's free to use, obviously, uh, but it's comprehensive uh, and it's a tailored solution, which is already used by a wide range of institutions worldwide. Um, and it is therefore a system of choice in terms of research information management systems uh, or current research information systems. Um, it's based on a core of DSpace, which is effectively the software that enables organizations to manage open digital repositories. But on top of that, it also offers distinct and additional functionality. Um, for example, uh, an extended data model, which is in fact serif orientated, and it is obviously secure, uh, interoperable, the interoperability is a key feature of the system, uh, and fully integrated, as we'll see, um, with a number of important external sources, uh, ORCID and other uh, key uh, databases. But more than anything, it's a single solution in which you can collect, connect, share and disseminate everything to do with the research lifecycle, um, whether that's people, publications, projects, papers, uh, organisations, whatever. So that makes it a very powerful proposition. The, um, this initial version of DSpace Chris 7 um, is designed particularly with new users in mind, and uh, it supports all those key use cases which we know that the modern repository uh, requires really for research information management systems. Um, there's more information on, on DSpace Chris 7 on our YouTube channel, and you can also catch up with us at the Open Repositories 2021 conference. Um, on the from the 7th of June 2021 and uh, there will be a specific presentation in fact a demo on DSpace Chris 7 on Thursday the 10th of June at nine o'clock UTC time so uh, for more information and to substantiate what I'm telling you today please do uh, see us there we look forward to seeing you there so what are those key enhancements that, that we'd like to highlight to you in particular? Well, firstly, uh, the aspect of integration is the most important one. There are four key aspects today that I'm just going to run you through. In terms of integration, DSpace Chris 7 is fully integrated with, uh, with ORCID, the latest ORCID, ORCID 3. So you can push and pull information to ORCID and from ORCID as, as you require, really. But not only that, it's integrated with a wide range of external data sources. Um, commercial ones as well, inclu including those bibliometrics, bibliographic citations, data. So we'll have a look at some of those in particular. In terms of ORCID, you can push and pull information, but firstly, just to show you the screenshot demonstrates, this will tell you that you are fully connected, fully synchronized uh, in ORCID within DSpace Chris 7. So that, that shows you're, you're in there and you're, you, you have a fully synchronized connection. Now, if you want to push or pull information here, for example, um, there's a number of different entities that you could choose to push, for example, this publication, regional portal, FVG, or equally country information or um, educational information. Uh, and if you wanted to submit that, you can see here that you can do so straight away within DSpace Chris 7 within ORCID. Um, so you can see that that submission has been made. The first item there, the regional portal has gone uh, because it's been submitted. Um, and indeed, you can see here that your ORCID ID, your ORCID profile is updated accordingly. So there's the regional portal there on it. So it's very direct and very effective integration with ORCID. In terms of external data sources, there's a wide range <clears throat> of external sources for publications that are made available uh, that are integrated with DSpace Chris 7. In particular, you know, Scopus, Web of Science, VU Find, PubMed, um, but not only publications, in fact, there's a number of other entities that the system makes available that you can easily access that are fully integrated with DSpace Chris 7. One of those is patents, for example. Here you can see that you can import patents from the European Patent Office. You can also import people or individuals, for example, from the, their ORCID um, you know, record. Uh, 
uh, or in fact organizations this is a, this is an example from a publisher you can import and finally you can also import funding uh, details details of funded projects here for example you can see a search on open air which was returned three uh, funded projects uh, there three items so you can have a look at those um, verify them and decide whether you want to import them or not um, and in doing so you can even see in quite rich detail the detail the 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 features and the the information around that particular uh, funded project um, so deep integration really um, across dspace 7 with a wide range of external sources the second aspect of the enhancements that i'd like to highlight to you is the flexibility that the system brings in many ways, this is related to the first point where the researcher, the individual researcher has a lot of control and management uh, of their own data and what is on that profile. OK, so here, for example, you can see um, I'll just move that because it's slightly in the way, but you can see that. Um, Let's go back there a second. You can see my colleague Andrea Bolini. This is his profile. He has the option here to, in DSpace Chris 7, to edit, export, manage research outputs, manage projects. And within all of those options, there's, there's an awful lot you can do to decide what information as a researcher you would like to make available in your profile. Often um, we find that people move on from projects. Uh, you may no longer be with a particular project group, or you may need to enhance a particular um, initiative you're working. You may need to sort of highlight an initiative you're working on at the moment, for example. Some information may become obsolete or out of date that you may need to suppress. So that degree of control on your own data and profile information is a very important aspect of DSpace Chris 7 that gives you um, complete control really to ensure that you are exposing the data that is correct and up to date and that you want to expose uh, in your profile. So the third aspect I'd like to highlight is that of compliance. Now DSpace Chris 7 is compliant with a range of um, standards obviously but the one we'd like to highlight here is the open air uh, guidelines in particular those forestry repositories data archives and crisp managers dspace chris 7 in fact comes with um, out of the box uh, compliance with the um, oai pmh context so it's fully dedicated in that way uh, and uh, that's already provided um, built into DSpace Chris 7. So that will make your life a lot easier. Final point uh, in terms of enhancements that in this quick overview that I'd like to highlight is that of data quality, accuracy and completeness. Um, within the within DSpace Chris 7, there are data quality tools that make sure that your information is always up to date and accurate. Uh, taking quality first and foremost, um, the system will um, enable you to make corrections uh, or suggest corrections to you on data. In this case, an external source, the open air broker here is suggesting some of the suggestions have come up for some, some uh, corrections. So you can have a look at those and decide whether you want to act on those corrections uh, and go through with them. Uh, obviously, that could come from other external sources within the system as well. In terms of data completeness, um, the system will also suggest uh, items and entities that you may wish to add uh, to uh, you may wish to add so in this case we've got 33 publications that have been suggested uh, through this open air graph uh, the regional portal has come up here and uh, you can choose whether or not to uh, to add that uh, add that data and this example is from open air but obviously you can do the same through orchid and in fact there is automatic updating from scopus and web of science data uh, in terms of any uh, any additional uh, data. The um, last aspect of the, the, the around the data quality I'd like to highlight is the accuracy. And this is going to conclude our very short overview, um, just to demonstrate here that um, whether duplicates, the system will highlight those to, those to you. So potential duplicate, you can have a look here and see, for example, that the system thinks there may be a duplicate to assess whether that's the case and decide whether to eliminate it or not. So again, that's uh, obviously powerful in ensuring the data is accurate, up-to-date, consistent, and complete.
Okay, that takes us to the end, really, of this very short presentation on DSpace Chris 7. Uh, we hope you like what you've seen so far um, for this quick overview. Don't forget that we'll be at uh, Open Repositories 2021 from the 7th of June. And uh, in fact, on Thursday, the 10th of June, you'll be able to see uh, a demo uh, by uh, DSpace Chris 7. Uh, more detail there and ask lots of questions. Um, and there'll be a number of other sessions, in fact, that we're running across Open Positive 2021 on ongoing projects uh, and on DSpace in general. So um, we look forward to seeing you there. And uh, here's our website and uh, my email if you need it. And many thanks for your attention.